Hello guys and welcome to hosting domain and WordPress by WA courses. In this video, we're going to be going over some basic terminologies. Uh, we're going to be coming across throughout the entire course. So um, I'm going to explain different hosting terminologies, domain terminologies, and a few things you might run into. Okay, so let's get started. First off, we're going to start out with the architecture of a uh, web host okay so i'm just going to be explaining everything that has to do with hosting and hosting your files on the server so what is a server a server is a software or hardware device usually a computer that accepts and responds to requests made over a network which is the internet so you can think of a server as a computer that is always connected to an to the internet or to a network okay so we basically have two instances of servers we have local servers which is also called local host and we have live server so a local server or local host is um, constrained to just your um, computer so it's not really connected to the world wide web it's just like an instance of that only within your computer okay and we also have live server which is uh, a server where you can host your website and other people can access it from the entire world okay so that's just the difference between both of them. You can install WordPress both on localhost and on the live server. So we normally use localhost to do things like staging and testing our WordPress website functionality. So you don't really you don't launch a website on a localhost. You always launch a website on a live server. Next up, we have web hosting. What is web hosting? Hosting is when a hosting provider allocates and rents out a space on a web server for a website to store its files and carry out tax okay so it's just um, a live server that you rent and you're able to host your files your wordpress website files on it and that's just essentially what it is okay so a hosting company uh, owns several computers that are connected to the internet or you can also call them servers that are connected to the internet so when you purchase a hosting account they give you access, um, allocate a specific amount of space and um, in the web server that allows you to store and make your websites to run. Okay, so there are different tiers of hosting. We have basically uh, three tiers. We have shared hosting, we have VPS, and we have dedicated server. You can think of shared hosting as an apartment with uh, different uh, units. Okay, so once you purchase a shared hosting account you get a unit in the apartment and automatically you share the, the, the resources in that in that apartment okay so if there's electricity you share electricity with every single other unit so if you're trying to uh, use up all the electricity it's going to affect every other uh, units in the apartment so that's just how shared hosting is you share resources and you share everything together both cpu power bandwidth and all that with vps um, it's more like an apartment also but instead you're getting like an entire floor to yourself so you can do things like uh, you can have more privacy you don't really have to share your resources so it just gives you like more control over the server itself okay so you're still sharing the physical uh server with other uh other users or other websites but you get a dedicated amount an allocated amount of uh, partitioned uh cpu power and bandwidth so you're not you don't share all your resources just the physical server itself okay so that's the difference between vps and shared hosting then we also have dedicated server the dedicated server is owning the entire apartment okay so if you own an entire apartment and uh, you don't really need to share anything you don't so you have full control over every single thing that happens in that apartment so that's how dedicated server is so if you have a dedicated server you can host a wordpress website and have complete control over the server speed and um, bandwidth and everything you can think about so that's different between shared hosting vps and dedicated server for vps vps is just like the mid tier shared hosting is like an entry level um, hosting um, tier and we have dedicated server which is more for powerful websites or websites that require a lot of um, resources okay then we also have managed wordpress hosting okay so this is just like a custom made uh let's just say it's like a vps okay that is custom made just for wordpress a few hosting companies offer this uh bluehost namecheap so what this essentially does is it optimizes um 
or hosting environment just for wordpress okay so it just it makes it very good for wordpress hosting and all that for most parts of this course we're going to be using shared hosting which gives us something called the cpanel okay so that's uh, a tool that's available on vps and dedicated server so if you learn how to use um, install wordpress and everything about wordpress on shared hosting you you won't really have a problem migrating to vps and dedicated servers so that's essentially it for web hosting uh, um, in this part, I'm just going to explain them some different technologies that you might come across when you're trying to purchase um, a hosting plan or something of that sort. So we have cPanel, which stands for Control Panel. This is just a software that allows you to uh, control your server. Okay, so if you're using a shared hosting, um, shared hosting tier plan, or using your VPS, it normally comes with a cPanel. So cPanel gives you access to things like email, email like webmail, so you can create new emails, you can install websites, file manager, DNS, so there's a lot of tools there. And later on in this course, we're going to be using a lot of the features in the cPanel. So just have it at the back of your mind that cPanel is a software that allows you to have control over your hosting account, okay? So it just allows you to install stuff and manage other stuff. They also have space or storage. You can have storage of 10 gig, 20 gig. It's just more like the normal storage you, you uh, of your system or your phone. So just the amount of space that you have to store files and do stuff. They also have bandwidth. So you can think of bandwidth as uh, you can think of bandwidth as a currency. Okay. So bandwidth is the currency in which you send and receive files over the internet. Okay, so if I visit a website and I'm presented with the home page of the website, that happens using bandwidth. Okay, so if, if the web page itself is about 20 kilobyte or 20 megabyte or whatever size it is, it's going to consume 20 megabyte worth of bandwidth. Okay, so you can just think of it as data or you can think of it as the currency at which things are being transferred online. They also have file manager, which is just uh, a utility that allows you to access your files, delete files, and manage your files. Then we have uptime and downtime. So this is very important. If you're getting a hosting account, uh, you always have to consider uptime and downtime. Okay. So uptime is the amount of time a server is up, and downtime is the amount of time a server is down. So you always want to look for something like uh, above 99.5 to 100 percent uptime and zero percent downtime okay so downtime is very very bad for a lot of reasons okay people can't really access your website uh, it's also bad for seo so there are a lot of reasons why you don't want a server that has a high downtime rate okay so always look for something with uptime guarantee a domain is simply a name that points to or represents a server ip so once you purchase uh a server whatever server you're purchasing it assigned they assign um, an ip address so a specific ip address that points to your files to your server files so once you purchase a domain a domain simply uh, acts as a representation of the ip address so whenever someone types the domain name it just moves to where the ip address is and grabs the files and presents it to the user okay so once we're um, setting up our wordpress website i'm going to explain in detail um, about everything here so the structure of a domain is um, you have the name at the left hand side then you have a dot and you have the extension so we have different kinds of extensions we have tlds which are top level domains we have uh, country level domains so something like uh, co.uk is a country level domain then we have Top level ones like .com, .net, .org. Then when it's in a country, like a specific country, that automatically makes it a country level. So you have .co.uk, .us, .ca for Canada, and so on and so forth. Okay. So, but mostly you're going to be using top level domains for um, a lot of your projects. Next up, we have things like subdomain. So subdomain is just uh, a domain uh like an addition to your domain name okay so if you have a domain name called domain.com a subdomain will be test.domainname.com so this allows you to do things like 
um, partitioning different parts of your website or different features of your website to specific names. Okay, so test.domain.com could be something for test shop.domain.com could be something for your e-commerce store or something of that sort so in this course we might be coming across subdomains a lot so that's why i'm including it here also we also have ssl certificate this allows this simply allows your domain name to uh, be encrypted through something called um https which is hyper transfer protocol secure okay so if you're not using an ssl certificate the request being sent from your server to a client is not going to be encrypted. Okay, so which means someone can use a sniffer and be able to extract information like credit card details and passwords. So it's very important to use an SSL certificate. There are a few different ones. There are free ones like Cloudflare, SSL. Uh, there are a lot of different ones right now. And there are a few that you have to pay for. So if you're using something like Namecheap or uh, some other hosting companies, they allow you to get a free SSL with your hosting account. Then we also have um, name servers. These name servers are just um, a way for you to point your domain to a specific uh, hosting company's uh, servers. Okay, so every hosting company have their own name server. So all you have to do is when you purchase a domain from any registrar, registrar is a company that allows you to purchase a domain. The, one of the most popular ones is godaddy.com so you can purchase the domain on godaddy and using name servers you can point it to um, a hosting account anywhere okay so name servers are very important so you just need to know what they are then we also have dns so dns allows you to control things like um, ip address where your ip address points adding new subdomains adding c names so later on in the course if we have to do anything concerning dns i'm going to explain in detail but for now just know that it's used for adding in things like c names and controlling ip address so that's basically it for this video in next video i'm going to be setting up um, a hosting account and i'm going to walk you through how you can do that with any hosting company because it's very very similar but we're going to be using namecheap okay so we're going to be using namecheap we're going to purchase a domain name and a hosting account then i'm going to show you other things like the cpanel and how you can install wordpress so I'll see you then.